Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session on fundraising ideas for healthcare nonprofits. My name is Abby Jarvis. I'm part of the team over at QGive, and I'm here to share some fundraising ideas you can use at your organization. And I'll also share some tips about the QGive tools you can use to make these campaigns successful. Let's get started. QGive is an online fundraising platform that is designed to help nonprofits like you do more good in the world. Whether you are looking for a simple donation form, a peer-to-peer -peer events platform, or a top-to-bottom online fundraising solution, QGive is designed to make it easy for you to build the fundraising campaigns you need. As a medical nonprofit, you care a lot about the health of your community, and we care just as much about the health of your organization. And the last year and a half or so has been really tough for all nonprofits, but especially healthcare-focused ones. If you're like many of the medical nonprofits we work with, you're facing some pretty unique challenges. The uncertainty around the COVID-19 pandemic may mean that your patients, staff, and donors have to be extra careful about attending in-person screenings, events, and services, let alone fundraising events. You may be facing an increased demand for services, increased cost for supplies, and changes to your funding. Whether you're providing medical care, whether you're conducting research, or whether you're supporting patients and their families, you need a fundraising tool that helps you raise money despite all of those changes. And QGIVE's features are designed to be simple and effective for organizations of any size, from big hospital organizations to small nonprofit foundations. And we're going to look at a few ways you can use our tool set to adapt to your changing needs and build a solid stream of dependable revenue. Today, I'll walk you through some of the products we offer here at QGIVE. You'll see lots of different fundraising ideas, lots of different ideas for campaigns and events. And I'll tell you a little bit about the QGIVE tools and features you can use to support each type of fundraiser. Let's take a look at some simple fundraising campaigns you can run at your nonprofit. Now, when I say simple campaigns, I don't want to downplay the work that goes into every single fundraising campaign you run. Um, in this instance, simple just means that there is no peer-to-peer -peer function, no silent auction event, and no text fundraising going on. Our standard donation forms, which you'll see over the next few slides, are an important part of our start package, and every QGIVE user has access to these tools. A lot of our clients are using our forms for year-round giving, and these forms are the primary donation forms users land on when they click on the Donate button on your website. These forms also support both one-time and recurring gifts, so many of our clients have both options enabled on their donation form. You can also create donation forms that include only one time or only recurring gifts. We've seen some really great recurring only forms people are using for appeals that focus specifically on asking for regular gifts. Those recurring gift options make it really easy to set up campaigns to support various memberships. So if you are running um, impact circles or young professionals groups or mentorships program, this is a great tool for you. Those are all wonderful donor engagement techniques that you may want to consider offering or may already offer. These forms are also really popular with younger donors who want to support you in a significant way, but can't give you hundreds or thousands of dollars all at once. So speaking of those younger donors, we recently enhanced our giving plans feature, which is also popular with younger donors. A giving plan gives donors a way to split a large gift into smaller increments. So if I wanted to give $1,000 to your capital campaign, just as an example, I could split that gift into 10 $100 donations. Medical nonprofits have also had a lot of success when using these forms for national giving day campaigns like Giving Tuesday or holiday campaigns or even matching gift campaigns. And speaking of matching gifts, another campaign we're seeing become increasingly popular is uh, campaigns that focus on matchings, matching gifts or partnerships with a corporate sponsor who will match up to a certain dollar amount. These two types of campaigns perform really well, especially if the nonprofit is using these donation forms in conjunction with a campaign thermometer that they use to track progress. I'll go a little more into those thermometers in a minute. 
And really the possibility for these forms are pretty endless. You can use our standard donation form to register your supporters for classes or other activities. You can use them to run a sponsorship campaign. You can use them to give donors the option to buy things from a wish list. You can sell t-shirts and other swag. We've also seen medical nonprofits get really creative with the opportunities they offer their donors with these forms. I also wanted to point out that the QGIF system offers some really handy features you can use to encourage matching gifts and corporate donations, which is a neat way to double a donor's impact and build relationships with businesses in your area. Now, I know every nonprofit needs to think about expenditures and they need to think about the return on any money they spend. So I wanted to highlight two simple features you can use to bring in more revenue. The first feature is Gift Assist. This feature is included in the QGIF Start Package. It comes standard with every QGIF account. This feature gives donors the option to offset processing costs by choosing to add a little extra to their gift. Uh, we track this feature weekly and our stats currently show that over half of donors are electing to give more to offset those transaction fees if they're given the opportunity. The second feature is a matching gift integration with a company called Cyber Grants. That integration is totally free and it gives donors a quick, easy way to see if their employer will match their donation. And they can check to see if their employer will match their donation right on the donation form itself. If you are already using a solution like HEP Data or Double the Donation, we do also integrate directly with those two services. Those two integrations do require you to be a customer with them as well. But if you are already using um, HEP data and double the donation, we can work with you to include that integration on your donation form as well. You can easily set up a campaign or an event, but what does this look like from your donor's perspective? Well, here are some features your donors are gonna love. Any form you set up in the QGIF system is designed with mobile phones in mind. So your donors will be able to give quickly and easily on their phones without getting frustrated. From a practical perspective, that means uh, bigger buttons. It means clearer images on cell phones and even someone on the smallest smartphone will be able to give on your form without getting frustrated or encountering problems. You also probably know that donors are most likely to give if they understand their impact and if they can visualize who their gift is going to help. So a favorite feature of mine is the ability to add images to donation amounts. Adding images really helps connect your donor with the people their gift will help, and it shows them how significant their gift really is. There are two additional features that make it really easy for donors to set up recurring gifts. The first one is a recurring prompt, like the one we have here. You can also set up a recurring modal that will pop up at the end of the donation process. And that modal asks donors if they would like to make their gift on a recurring basis. You can always turn these features on and off, but they are a great way to draw attention to your recurring donation program. The last thing I wanted to point out is the conditional logic you can use with any custom fields you add to your donation form. So custom fields allow you to ask questions that the form doesn't already ask, like what is your t-shirt size or how did you hear about us? Conditional logic gives you the option of adding additional fields if a customer or a donor answers a question a certain way. So if your donor doesn't need to tell you what size shirt they wear, that question won't even appear. This is really great for your donors because those conditional fields only appear if they need to. And that means your donors don't have to navigate irrelevant fields. And that means they're gonna have a better donation experience and will be more likely to finish their gift. And again, all of these packages are, or all of these features are included in our start package. You can read more about this package on our website or if you're a current client, you can already access these features in your account. I alluded to it a few slides ago, but another really great tool in the QGIF system is our campaign thermometer. Uh, campaign thermometers are a great way to give your donors a sense of their impact as you work toward reaching a fundraising goal. 
And you can add these thermometers to your donation forms and they will update in real time. Uh, and it's a great way to show off how close you are to meeting your goal. These thermometers work really well for giving days. They're great for capital campaigns. They're great for matching challenges. The possibilities really are pretty endless. And again, this feature is included standard in the start package. So you immediately have access to this and you can add it without any extra cost to your campaigns. Now, if you're generating a lot of different forms, which you can do, you get unlimited donation forms with this account, you will appreciate our widget tool. The widget feature makes it easy for you to embed your donation form right into your website. And that means practically that you're keeping your donors right on your site without hyperlinking them to another landing page. Uh, the URL stays the same. It's a better user experience for your donors. This also means you can spin up different donation forms and plug them into the appropriate page. So you can set up a special web page for your annual gala. You can create a QGIF donation form, drop that form right onto the event page, and then people can read about your event and donate to it right there. Now, on the other hand, if you have a special campaign and you don't want to embed that form on your site, you can use what we call a landing page in our form builder. That feature makes it really easy to build a nice looking standalone donation form. It still has your organization's branding. You just don't have to build a new page for it on your website. Let's look at some of the QGIF tools you can use as you plan events for your nonprofit. Now, again, just as there's no simple fundraising campaign, there is also no such thing as a simple fundraising event. Uh, when I reference a simple fundraising event, I'm referring to events that don't include peer-to-peer -peer or silent auction pieces. So just keep that in mind as I go through these next few slides. One feature that is also included in our free start package is our simple event registration forms. And I wanted to share a few ideas about how to use these forms based on what we're seeing with current clients. People get so creative with these forms. I wish I could show you way more examples than I have up here. We've seen them used for all kinds of in-person virtual events. We've seen them used for classes and seminars. We've seen them used for health screenings. We've even seen them used for merchandise sales. So they, they really are versatile. In this example here, I see you baby use their event form for a march. And we've also seen these folks register uh, people for everything from festivals to award ceremonies to virtual game nights. Even if your clients and your patients and your supporters aren't able to meet in person, there are still a lot of opportunities to bring everyone together virtually using the simple event system. Some nonprofits have also used these forms to sell sponsorships to their corporate partners. Um, one example I saw sold sponsorships that paid for support groups and therapy for one organization's patients. I thought that was a beautiful application of this feature. There are lots of really fun and creative ways to use these simple event registration forms. Some of our users have gotten extra creative with this feature and use it as a way to enhance other fundraising activities. So if your nonprofit has a membership program, you can use this system to sell memberships or even different levels of memberships. You can also use a simple event registration form to supplement your ongoing event programming. You can create a form to sell raffle tickets, you can sell swag, you can sell special supplies. Really this system is versatile enough that there's a lot of room for creativity and really fun engagement ideas. Now, I've showed you a couple of ideas for using this event system, and I want to highlight some of the specific tools and features you can use to support your event. Of course, these, this supports event registration, even if there's not a cost associated with the registration. So you can use it as an RSVP service. You can also set up promo codes and early bird discounts. Those are great tools to have handy if you are trying to encourage your guests to register early. Um, you know, everybody likes to wait till the last minute to register. You can try giving them a promo code or an early bird discount to encourage them to sign up in advance. One of my favorite features that I think often is overlooked in the system is the multi-package pricing discounts. 
So if you're selling event registrations for $50, but you want registration to drop to $40 when five or more people register, you can set that up really easily. Now, if you're using these forms, I do highly recommend enabling event donations. Uh, event donations let your supporters make an additional donation while they're registering for your event. And they can also just make a donation if they can't attend your event at all. It's a great way to engage people who wanna support you but can't attend. Another neat feature that may be helpful as you run your event is the custom fields tool. That tool gives you a way to collect extra information from your donors based on the details of their event registration. So if I'm registering for your event and I buy a package that includes a t-shirt, you can ask me what size shirt I wear. But if my friend registers for a different package that doesn't include a shirt, she won't have to answer that question. It's a really nice way to keep the registration process streamlined and simple for your supporters. And it will also make your life easier because you won't have to sort through a lot of messy data. Uh, and one last feature I'd like to highlight here is our customizable receipts. Aside from including the specifics about your supporters registration, you can also include conditional content that is based on their registration details. So you could add an extra sentence or two to my receipt telling me how to get my event t-shirt without including that extra detail in my friend's receipt because she doesn't need it. Uh, it's really easy to set up and your participations will or your participants will definitely appreciate your attention to detail. Let's take a look at how your medical nonprofit can use peer-to-peer -peer events. Peer-to-peer -peer is a great strategy for organizations that want to raise money. And it's also a great strategy for organizations that want to build and strengthen relationships with the people in their donor base and the people who care about their cause. Uh, we've seen lots of events go virtual the last year or so. Uh, we've seen virtual walks and races and biking events. And it has been really amazing to watch our clients get so creative with how they build a sense of community and a sense of camaraderie despite the distance that has kind of dominated everything for the last year and a half. Lots of nonprofits who ran races or bike rides encourage their participants to share their progress using apps like Strava, like Map My Ride, and a few organizations even put together custom Google Maps where participants could share the routes they ran or biked. So it was a really fun way to see where all of your other companions were running and participating, even if you couldn't attend all together in person. Of course, that's great for the more athletic events, but an engagement tactic that works for pretty much every event style is putting together a hashtag. Uh, we've seen peer-to-peer -peer events with tons of creative styles and formats. We've seen scavenger hunts and fashion shows and trivia nights and you name it, each with their own hashtag. Uh, using that hashtag made it easy for participants to find each other. It makes it easy for people to interact with other supporters, and it does help build a really cool sense of community. It's also handy for you and your staff if you need to identify and kind of interact with your different supporters. If you have them using a hashtag, they're all in one place, they're easy to find, and it can really cut back on the amount of time you spend on social media interacting with everyone who's supporting you. Another fun idea is to allow DIY fundraising. If you are not familiar with the term DIY fundraising, it's a peer-to-peer -peer style where different supporters can create their own fundraising pages. They can raise money for you on those fundraising pages, but they aren't doing it in the context of a larger event. So people can set up their own fundraising pages for events like their birthday, their wedding, their graduation, and they can ask their friends and family to donate instead of giving gifts. This is a, a great way to engage your, your supporters and the people who are passionate about your cause. And it's also a really cool way to engage your board. So if your board members have a hard time raising money for you, which is something that every nonprofit struggles with, uh, you can try giving each board member their own peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. Now, for a lot of folks, remember, sharing their own fundraising page on social media can be less intimidating than asking for donations in person, especially if they don't have a lot of fundraising background or if they're shy or if they're not comfortable asking people for money face-to-face. -face. So you can try offering them this fundraising method as a way to support you. You can build board engagement. It's really great when you are looking for grants. 
Uh, and this is a, a good way to get them to share their enthusiasm and support for your cause, spread the word and raise money for you. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising lends itself especially well to events like giving days or holiday challenges. So instead of asking people to donate to you directly, you could ask them to raise money on your behalf. Uh, it's a, an outstanding engagement technique, really, especially if you've already got a base of supporters who are passionate about your mission. Uh, you can also use the QGive peer-to-peer -peer platform to run an online storefront, even as a year-round fundraising campaign. One of my personal favorite campaigns from the last year or so was a food bank that used our peer-to-peer -to -peer tool to put together an online food pantry. And when donors visited that page, they could buy different supplies for the organization. You could do something similar. You could set up an event that asks people to buy personal protective equipment, medical supplies, care bags, really any other supplies you need or supplies you need to give to support your clients. Our peer-to-peer -peer platform is really designed to make it easy for you to set up and run your event, and it's flexible enough that it can support lots of those different event styles and requirements. Uh, and in addition to supporting individual fundraisers, I did want to mention that you can also enable team fundraising. So if you enable team fundraising, your supporters can recruit friends and family to raise money with them. They can put together a team of fundraisers, and then they can all raise money for you together. And honestly, encouraging a little friendly competition between teams is a really good way to keep your participants engaged with fundraising. And it's a good way to get them to kind of build a sense of camaraderie, uh, engage with each other, encourage each other, and compete with each other. It, it can be really fun. Now, regardless of your event style, you can use the event builder tool to put together a beautiful event page. Don't worry if you don't have a background in design. Don't worry if your designer is already slammed and can't put together an event. I always tell people that if I can put together a nice looking peer-to-peer -peer event, anyone can, and it's true. You can customize nearly every aspect of your event from the coloring to the language on the page, and the event builder tool is really easy and it's really intuitive. Uh, this platform also supports lots of different kinds of transactions you may need to make during the course of your event. You may not need to make all of these, but uh, it's nice to know that it's available. So of course this platform supports regular donations, uh, but it can also support recurring donations, which is really handy if you're running a long-term campaign like a board fundraiser or a DIY campaign. Uh, this platform can also accommodate store sales and there are tools that make it easy to process donations, registrations and store purchases when you're offline. And then you can add that transaction information to your peer-to-peer -peer event and all of your totals will update accordingly. Now, our goal is to help you run a successful campaign. And practically that means we need to give you and your participants tools to make that happen. So these are just a few of my favorite features in the system. They are built specifically to make your participants more successful because that's how you run a successful peer-to-peer -peer event. Now, the best way to keep people engaged in the fundraising process is to give them incremental fundraising milestones to reach and then reward them for meeting those goals. And that's where our badge system comes in. Uh, you can create your own badges or you can use the ones that we already have built in the system and you can reward your participants for meeting different fundraising goals for recruiting new team members if you've enabled team fundraising uh, for finishing their fundraising page there's a ton of room for creativity here your boards feature to show off your top fundraisers and encourage some friendly competition between your participants as they try to place on those leaderboards now, the next two features, text fundraising and Facebook fundraisers, make it really easy for your participants to raise money in the ways that are most convenient for them. So the text giving feature is especially cool. I've actually used it as a peer-to-peer -peer participant. And the way it works is this. So you as an organization choose your event's overall keyword, say your event keyword is gonna be LRH5K, and then participants can add their own secondary keyword and that secondary keyword makes sure that donations are credited to their fundraising totals. So if your event keyword is LRH5K, my personal keyword might be LRH5K Jarvis, 
and any gifts made to my special keyword count toward my personal fundraising goal. The Facebook fundraisers integration is really handy for your participants who are very active on social media. A lot of our clients were coming to us saying that their peer-to-peer -peer participants had set up a Facebook fundraiser to support their peer-to-peer -peer campaign, and they wanted to know if the money participants raised on Facebook could be reflected in the overall fundraising totals in the QGIF system. And with this integration, they can. If one of your fundraisers raised, say, $500 on their personal fundraising page and $150 on Facebook, if you use this integration, both their Facebook fundraiser and the QGIFT system will show that they've raised a total of $650. So you can give your participants these tools. They can use them to be successful, but it is always a good idea to keep in touch with your participants throughout the fundraising period, even if you've given them the best tools around. So as you reach out to your participants, the email campaigns tool is gonna be your best friend. You can use it to celebrate with people who are reaching important fundraising milestones. Um, you can use it to nudge your inactive participants and kind of remind them to get involved again. You can use the, this feature to send fundraising tips to folks based on their level of fundraising activity. Uh, it's a really powerful system that makes it easy for you to engage and encourage your participants. And that does two things. One, it keeps your event at the top of their minds, which is great because your participants are busy. It's easy for them to get distracted. But it also helps them raise more money overall because you are kind of constantly popping up and giving them extra encouragement. And uh, You can also use that email campaign tool to let them know about other fundraising opportunities like the matching gifts tool that is included in the platform. Let's take a look at how medical nonprofits can use text fundraising for their fundraising campaigns. Now, if you are wondering if text fundraising is really effective or if it's just a trend, you'll find these statistics interesting. Now, text messages are unbelievably powerful. The average open rate for text messages is 98% within the first five minutes and no other communication method comes close. If you're anything like me, you may get like a 35% open rate on an email and that is a red letter day. So texts are unbelievably powerful. We are used to reading text messages immediately and that is true for text sent by nonprofits as well. Uh, donors are also used to donating by text and it is becoming increasingly popular. Nonprofits uh, using the QGIF system actually saw a 16% increase in money raised this way between the year of 2019 and 2020, and that trend is continuing. And right now, the average text donation process through the QGIF system is over $100. So it's something that we're comfortable with, and we are actively using it to support our favorite nonprofits. Now, we love giving on our forms. Simply making your donation form mobile responsive doubles giving on that form and having that mobile form is especially important for text donors. Now, listen, because texting is so powerful, you can use it either as a standalone fundraising campaign or you can use it to enhance other events and campaigns that you already have on your calendar. Now, this is an especially effective tool for events. So if you are running an event and you want to increase your fundraising at your event, try plugging a text to donate keyword during a live stream, during a keynote speech, plug it on your event signage, put it in your social media accounts, you really put it anywhere. If you really wanna take things to the next level, you can try sharing a live stream of these donations on your event page. So you can do this using a tool called FundHub Live and FundHub Live gives you an easy way to put together a really beautiful event page and show a live feed of gifts and messages from your event attendees. It's a really fun engagement tool. Now, if you use QGIVS Mobile Suite, you can set up multiple text to donate keywords at no extra charge. So you can create one keyword to support your event that we just talked about. You can set up another one to support your annual campaign. You can put together a keyword for your Giving Tuesday campaign. There are lots of possibilities. Now, and also for each keyword you create, you can also put together some custom reminder messages that will go out to donors who get distracted during the gift process and remind them to finish their donation. 
The mobile suite package also includes the really cool ability to send outbound text messages. And remember, this is a really, really powerful communication tool. So use these outbound text messages wisely and use them to send updates about your events. So updates like venue changes, COVID-19 protocols, and other important details that need to be read. Those are all great candidates for outbound texts. This is also a wonderful donor engagement tool. So you can try using outbound text messages for very urgent, very time sensitive fundraising appeals. Uh, they're great if you need to ask your supporters to take an immediate action, like writing a senator or signing a petition. It's also a really good way to send important impact updates to donors who have opted into receiving news and updates from you. And that last part is really important. You really want to send these outbound text messages to people who are actively looking for this kind of update. So be sure you're asking people to opt into receiving these messages. You may want to go one step further and create different opt-in keywords for different groups of people so you can send only the most relevant information. So you may have one keyword for people who want event updates. You could have a different one for people who want impact updates, et cetera. You really hear the name of the game here is sending relevant, timely messages to people who want to receive them. That will keep your readership high, your opt outs low, and will make it more likely that people do what you want them to do after they receive those messages. Now we've taken a look at how you can use some of these different tools to engage donors and facilitate donations, but I want to take a minute to tell you exactly what our mobile suite package includes. Mobile suite users can set up multiple text to donate keywords. They can create and schedule their own reminder messages that go out to those donors, and they can point each of those different keywords to different forms. So if you have a form, especially for Giving Tuesday, you can make sure that your Giving Tuesday keyword points to that donation form. Uh, it's a great way to facilitate those donations and your bookkeeper will love you for being specific. Now the mobile suite also includes outbound text messages. So it's easy to build and manage different subscription lists, which like I mentioned earlier, helps you send relevant text to different segments of donors. And you can also upload your own text messaging lists if you already have an established base of supporters who are interested in receiving those updates and have already opted in. Silent auctions are a really popular fundraising tactic for a lot of medical nonprofits. So let's take a look at how you can use QGIVS tools to support your next auction event. Now, there are all kinds of steps you can take to boost participation at your silent auction, even if you're holding a virtual auction or if you have a mix of both remote and in-person attendees. The most popular method, of course, is to use live streaming video. It's a great way to provide entertainment and give updates throughout your event. It's also really handy if you want to build some hype around the different auction items that you have and if you want to encourage bidding activity. As you're running your event, whether or not you're doing a live stream, you can try sharing stories from your clients. Um, of course, you have to think about HIPAA laws and privacy, so you'll need to be intentional about the stories you share. But sharing stories does help your auction participants envision who their gifts will support. Uh, it helps them imagine the impact they can have, and that can help boost participation and encourage bidding, which we all want. You can encourage bidding even more by letting your auction attendees look over your items before the day of the event. If they already know which auction items they're excited about before the event starts, they will start bidding earlier in the event. And that leaves more time for bidding wars and all kinds of bidding activity that will drive up the cost of the winning bids, which means more fundraising for you. When you give your participants the, auction, the option to look over auction items early, you also leave yourself plenty of time to hype up some of your big ticket items. So if you have something really wonderful, if you have a trip or some great electronics, something that you know is gonna bring in some, some good totals, hype them up before the event. Get people excited about them. Highlight those auction items on social media. Uh, you can get people excited about it through email, really anywhere you think your participants will see that information. And then you can take that engagement to the next level by enhancing your auction with uh, 
raffle tickets or other games or drawings. Uh, participants can buy tickets through your auction event, uh, which is a great way to produce a little extra revenue. And raffles honestly lend themselves really well to streaming video. So you can do the drawing, you can draw the winner during your event, live stream it so folks can learn the results at home and people who are with you in person uh, can get excited at the same time. Raffles are a great way to raise money also from attendees who are not especially interested in bidding or people who are bidding but don't know if they're gonna get the item they want. And another great way to engage those donors is to offer them some fun to need items. So even if they don't wanna bid on any of the auction items, participants can still support you by purchasing fun to need items. Uh, you can try offering care packages, equipment, supplies, or really any other items that relate to your mission. So we know silent auctions are popular. We know they can raise a lot of money for your organization, but silent auctions can also be pretty labor intensive. And that's why we focused on building an auctions tool that makes it easy for you and your staff to manage your event. So aside from the event and bidder management tools in our system, those make it easy for you to build and promote your event. You can use items uh, or tools like the item import tool. If your event includes lots of items, the item import tool is a really easy way to upload large batches of items instead of creating them one at a time. So if you're already using a spreadsheet to track the items you've collected from different businesses in your community, uh, you can put in the relevant information, do a batch upload, and that will save you a ton of time. And here's another thing to consider. When you build your silent auctions page, everything you and your participants need will be in one place. So when you put together your auctions page, your participants can register for the event, check in, bid on auction items and check out all in one place. So this platform supports participants in person through an app, as well as remote participants who can get involved either on that app or on their desktop computers. Now, both in-person and remote participants can also buy fund and need items. They can purchase other, purchase other items like raffle tickets, and drink tickets, um, event merchandise if you're selling that. There are also matching gift options for people who donate to you during your event. And of course, if you need it, your staff can use our mobile virtual terminal tool for in-person attendees who want to make purchases directly from you instead of using the app. You've seen tons of different campaign and event ideas. They each use different parts of the QGIS system, but you may still have questions about whether or not this platform is a good fit for your organization. So one of my favorite things about the QGIVE system is our pricing structure. And I understand that isn't usually something people would cite as their favorite feature, uh, but our online uh, pricing structure was designed to help you try new fundraising methods without assuming a lot of risk. So our base package, the start package that I've referenced a few times throughout this presentation has no monthly fee associated with it. You only pay the processing costs and then from there, if you would like to, you can try different packages like the ones we looked at today. Now we have no contracts and you can choose to pay for something either month to month or on a quarterly basis. So what that means for you is that if your organization runs one peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser a year, you may want to add that peer-to-peer -peer package to your account, use it for a quarter, and then move back down to the start package. If you want to try using text messaging, you could try it for a month or two, decide if you want to keep it, and if you don't want to keep it, you can just turn it off. Uh, another thing that I'd really like to highlight is we know that having good donor data is really important, and I wanted to mention a few of the integrations that are available specifically through our data package. Uh, we integrate with several email services, and that makes it easier for you to send segmented emails to different groups of supporters. So you may send one email to a list of clients, you may send another email to one-time donors, you may send something different to your recurring donors. It's all very easy to accommodate using these email integrations. We also integrate directly with many of the leading CRMs in the industry, and these integrations are really designed to save you and your staff lots of time. Uh, you set up your integration the first time, you turn it on, you can set it to run manually or you can set it to run automatically. 
uh, and we will update your constituents' profiles with their giving activity from QGive. If you're using QuickBooks or if you're using third-party matching gift services, we support those as well. And if you're using a service that's not on this list, we may be able to help you set up a custom integration with a tool called Zapier. Uh, if you have questions about Zapier and how it works, do contact us with any questions about it. Uh, we know how easy it is to have clean data that's easy to access and easy to use, and we can help you get set up. We also know that healthcare organizations have unique missions. You all have unique donor bases and you have unique needs. If you have any questions about how our platform can work for your organization, don't hesitate to ask us. We work with medical organizations of all sizes all over the country, and we're happy to share how they've made our tools work for them and help you come up with some ideas for how to use our tools to work for you. You can always contact us with those questions, and I want you to remember that. Uh, contact us with questions, contact us with troubleshooting issues, contact us even if you just want to run an idea past our team. We're here to serve you and to help you do your job well. Our customer experience team is ready to support you. We've actually won awards for the level of support our customers enjoy, uh, and you don't have to take our word for it. Uh, we're proud of the awards we've won, of course, that's why we put them this, on the this slide, uh, but we do also share our real-time customer feedback publicly on our website. Uh, if you need help with anything, if you need help with your QGIVE account, uh, if you need help with troubleshooting, if you need help with ideas, there are lots of options for you. Your QGIVE account includes unlimited training. It includes unlimited phone support. You get access to knowledge bases and help desks and chat support. And we have tons of educational resources for you that will help you as you plan your campaigns. We really want you to succeed and we are here to help you any way we can. And if you're a small organization, if you're a big organization, we want you to know that your success matters to us. And that's regardless of your size, your mission, or your needs. Uh, just as an example, our friends over at Zero Breast Cancer, it's a small organization, but they are thriving alongside big organizations. And if you need to give us feedback, if you have ideas, or if you are consistently encountering something you think could be better handled somewhere else, we listen. Uh, our clients' needs and feedback is an important part of our development plan. We track every feature request you have. We track every piece of feedback that you give us. Uh, if you need a tool that's not in the QGIVE system, if you want a feature that would make your life a little easier, let us know. Our goal is to work with you to help make your job easier and to help you do more good in your community. Now, if you've watched this session and you have questions about next steps or how to use QGIVE, here's how to get a hold of us. If you're a current client, if you're already using QGIVE and you want to know how to apply what you've learned today to your account, shoot us an email at support at QGIVE.com and someone from the customer experience team will help you. If you are not using QGIVE already, you can reach us by emailing us at contact us at QGIVE.com. Uh, we'll spend some time learning about you. We'll learn about your organization and your goals. And then we'll help you figure out which tools would be the best fit for you and which tools will be the best uh, support for your campaigns. And if you're looking for more information about fundraising best practices, if you want to see more examples from our clients, or if you want to learn about how to use specific QGIVE tools, I would recommend checking out our blog. Uh, we update the blog multiple times a week, so there is always something new to learn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you got some ideas for future fundraising campaigns. I hope you have a little bit of a better understanding about how QGIF can help make those campaigns happen. Uh, do let us know if we can help you with anything. And until then, happy fundraising. <laughs>